Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Ayu ala habba. One of the great acts of worship that we sometimes become soft about, that we forget. And perhaps from laziness or out of fear of the people, we delay it or avoid it altogether. And that is commanding the good and forbidding the evil. That we often feel that we don't want to disturb other people or have problems with other people and violate what we feel is the right of other people to do whatever they please. But in fact, it's a great form of ibadah of worship, a way to come closer to your Lord and please Him, especially if you are trying to advise your brothers and sisters and others from doing wrong. Ayyuh al habba that act of, uh, the act of ibadah is in fact an obligation upon us that we must command the good and forbid the evil. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described this nation. Kuntum khayran ummah ukhrijat lin nas ta'maruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna an al munkar. That you were the best nation that has ever you're the best nation that has ever uh, appeared before the people. Commanding the good and forbidding the evil. So Ayala Habba, it's a duty that we have to do. Especially if we want that description of being the best nation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described us with. And that ayu al habba requires from us striving and action and iman and it's a part of iman it's a part of our faith to command the good and forbid the evil and with that ayu al habba by commanding the good and forbidding the evil, we're fulfilling our commandments to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I said, Iman is on different levels. And our Iman, our faith fluctuates. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. Listen to this hadith of uh, Abi Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Qala sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul. من راء منكم منكر فليغيره بيد فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك عدو في الإيمان رواه مسلم أيها الأحبة the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه who said I heard the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say that whoever sees a munkar, sees something sinful, then change it with his hands. You know, meaning stop that. If he's unable to do so, then change it with his tongue, speak out against it. And if he's still unable to do so, then he should hate it in his heart, and that's the weakest form of Iman. Letting us know Iman has different levels, and that different deeds have uh, illustrate different actions, uh, different levels of Iman for us. And it 
it also illustrates ayu al habba that calling to the good and forbidding the evil is a part of iman a part of faith and calling to the good and forbidding the evil is an obligation because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said said man ra'a minkum munkaran whoever sees a munkar whoever sees a sin then change it with his hands ayul habba often that's difficult we're, we're shy about those things but we have to strive our best to not let those sins in that maasi build up around us perhaps you may go into a restaurant and we have this situation here restaurants and stores that have halal written on them and they even sell alcohol and things like this have munkarat or or maybe not alcohol but they sell uh, items of shirk crosses and, and, and other things from other cultures that illustrate the worship of Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. So it becomes an obligation upon us to advise our brothers and sisters who own these establishments. Or you may go into another type of establishment and your sister's not wearing hijab and serving the people. Music is blasting, the people may be beha behaving in a certain way. So we have to strictly for the sake of Allah, try your best to at least speak out against it. And you don't have to yell and, and attack the people. You do what is wise and what is within your ability. So advise them. We can all advise at least. We can all say, excuse me, brother, excuse me, sister. Um, you know, can we turn the music off? Or whatever the situation may be. Ayyola Habba. The more we keep silent about these things, and may Allah help us to correct ourselves as well, I mean, that the more those sins become regular in our hearts, and the more those sins become prominent amongst the community, and the more likely it is that we'll receive the destruction and punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah will be far from us, and when the punishment comes, we'll all be included because we didn't command the good and forbid the evil. Even if a person was doing righteousness themselves, doing righteous, but they didn't ever speak out against the evil. Ayola Habba and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I think another way in which we fail as a general community, especially in the West, in certain places anyhow, that we fail to speak out against extremism as well, Ayola Habba. Speak out against it. Change it. Hate it in your heart that these people who call our youth to go be suicide bombers, these people who distort the image of Islam, these people who attack the honor of the scholars, these people who attack the honor of the students of knowledge and the people calling to the worship of Allah alone. You have to hate that in your heart. You have to try to change that by speaking out against it. That we have to begin to set ourselves apart from the extremist. That those people should feel shame and they should never speak. They shouldn't have positions in our communities. Ayyola Habba. This is very dangerous and this is part of commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq. And may Allah put this on our scale of good deeds and forgive us for our many sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.